Welcome to Verbal Peak Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. And I got a, a good friend, a person that I've recently met, and I say good friend because I feel a brother's spirit, and it, it's very hard to find a brother that's coming from the continent of Africa who's diverse on African history and also the uh, touch bases on uh, African Americans that's within the USA. Uh, his name is Dominique Okiki, and we'd like to welcome you to the show. Good evening, Dominique Okiki, and it's, it's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, you're welcome to, and I'm happy, uh, kind of uh, re engaging and reconnecting with uh, a whole bunch of uh, black people again across the ocean from Africa. And uh, it's an opportunity, like um, living in U.S., to come in contact with uh, black brothers who have been uh, uh, distant or like uh, kept away from us from some uh, kind of uh, historical events and uh, you know things we're, like that. Right now, we're gonna do a timeline, then, and we want to bring it from the past. We're gonna bring this timeline into the present. Now, one question I gotta ask before we get into this timeline is: Do they teach? the history of slavery in Nigeria, of what happened to the blacks in America? Of course, they teach it in Nigeria, history uh, for students uh, taking history classes, but in some countries like in Central Africa, I will specifically Cameroon, where um, I learned um, my middle school history, it's been uh, given some detailed attention, whereby because um, the um, locations within the cities where these um, slave trade um, um, events occurred are also being uh, noted and pointed out to the youths when they are taking a uh, history as a subject in middle school and in high school. Now, one question, and I get a lot of brothers that's in America, they ask me, why don't the African brothers, why don't a lot of these scholars come over here and teach us? Because now a lot of brothers want to know about uh, Igbo, the Igbo. They want to know about Yoruba. They want to know about Ogun. They want to know. They want the in-depth knowledge. They, 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 they thirsty for information. And they, they wonder why a lot of people is not... Uh, especially a lot of our African brothers that you know that comes to the Americas don't teach us. A lot of brothers want this; they want this information. Well, to begin with, uh, on this question, I would like to talk about uh, a kind of uh, what appears to be a cultural shift between the Africans back in the African continent and uh, the African Americans. When I talk about African Americans, I mean uh, with. Africans who migrated here, their, their, their kids, their grandchildren, who also were born here, you know, like, uh, it's, um, they, they need, they, there's a need for the African American and the, those who are migrating from Africa to re-establish that link, the kind of link we saw in the 60s, in the 70s, when the civil rights movements in the United States, the black civil rights movements in the United States were uh, trying to regain uh, their voting rights, and uh, the 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 African nations were trying to uh, they were advocating for independent states. So there was this unity. We could see that between uh, 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 African American leaders like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, yes, when they came around Lagos, they came around to Accra. We could see that in people like Julius Nyerere, Kwame Nkrumah, Namdi Azikiwe. Uh, Leopold Senghor, a lot of these guys, Julius Nyerere, they were all here in the U.S. and they studied and they met these people. They could, they created that link. But Correct. today we can't see that link. It's only Louis Farrakhan who is trying to uh, kind of maintain it. But most African yes, leaders are not trying to do that. Yes, sir. So, but so we'll look at a case whereby we'll look at a case whereby the the African themselves they have to understand what the African Americans passed through in the United States. Right. Like. Four centuries ago, three centuries ago, two centuries ago, and even when they came here in the shows for the first time. At the same time, I will also advise the African American, uh, the Africans, to also try to go back to their histories because they too are losing it. Right. So by the time we all get all this, and then we also uh, try to link it up with the African Americans, the black people will generally know about their history, 
and they will, they will reposition just like Lincoln said you know where you're coming from you know where you're standing you definitely know where you're going to and you get to where you're going yes Thank sir you. that now that that was well stated and that is truth because when you have knowledge of who you are you can stand strong and firmly on this planet no one can shake your foundation because you know who you are you know and that's actually that's a fact you know and uh, I want to touch bases real quick on Lagos is for Spain, and well, Lagos is for Spain, Lagos in Nigeria. Because what I read was the fact that when Queen uh, Isabella and Ferdinand, when they had, uh, when they had, got uh, put the Moors up out of Spain, they the Moors came to that part of Nigeria and named it Lagos. Portuguese. The, and they were saying the Portuguese. Yes. Now, but whether were the Portuguese the Moors or whether the Portuguese was European. And what because he, what we have depicted as Moors is Moors was our North African brothers. Yeah. Uh they they were Europeans. Because the name Lagos means lagoon in Portuguese which is not a, it's not a, an English name because later the English came, you know, the Germans came, so we all saw these people along the line. But was the yeah. were the Portuguese Muslims? Because the Moors was Muslims. I mean, yeah. the Moors that ran Spain for seven hundred years, who built the the Muslims? Yeah, the Moors were Muslims. But what the history didn't really clarify us is we don't know whether the Portuguese and the Spanish by then were already uh, Muslims because this was like, uh, it was uh, around the uh, 14th, 15th century. Right. Yeah, and so it dates back to that. And uh, we couldn't really tell because at that time, we know in uh, history at some point, the Muslims took over Spain the conquered Spain took over, and then the Central Europeans, uh, with the aid of the Vatican uh, and Rome, came back to take it over. Okay, okay. So that's that's clarification, and we award you and commend you on your studies, definitely. And and keep keep this spirit alive of teaching because you are an orator and a teacher. Keep building. I appreciate having you on the show, and this is just part one of some more to come, you know? Yes. And thank you for being on the show. This is Brother Dominique Okiki. Now, is there anything you want the public to know, any websites, anything you got coming up? You got books you're getting ready to write? You got lectures you're going to give? Because I see you in the future giving lectures, bro. Well, uh, I believe it's, it's already beginning because... Uh, the way I look at life, I look at life, I look at everything I do in life from uh, the point of uh, what can one offer to humanity. Just like Steve Jobs used to say, uh, follow your passion, but your passion should also have influence in the world. So I look at it this way, like, how can we help ourselves? The black people appear to be lagging, though not really. But I keep asking, how could they come together again? How could those who feel the need to know their genealogy know it so they keep moving? How could those who already know it, it kind of uh, reinforce it so they also keep moving? Because we want the black people not just to be free, but to be financially and uh, right. with education. They should be free morally, mm. by ethics, in every ramification. Right. And, and, I, and I believe... We're putting that effort, we unite ourselves, we're going to get it. That's right, and this is a start. Thanks again, Burrow Peak Radio, yeah. and we out. You're welcome, bro. Yes, sir.